is the actual block. And this is a um, educational series. So, how does it all work? How does this whole four stroke malarkey work? So, you have your piston. Um, just like the two stroke going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then what you have, the difference between a two stroke and a four stroke is not just the number of cycles, but also how it controls the intake, the inhale and the exhale of the fluid or the gas in and then back out of the engine when required. And that's the important bit. It's controlled um, it's timed, it's, you know, it's, it's controlled by timing where the piston is in the cycle so you have your um, timing arrangement and your timing arrangement consists of a timing gear, a, a gear um, on your uh, crankshaft and a gear on your camshaft just like so and these are gears even though they have a chain these are not sprockets these are gears so your chain sits up here like so and it's a two to one ratio and it is always a two to one ratio always that's it for every single engine that is a four stroke engine it is a two to one ratio which means that the crankshaft revolves once where the camshaft revolves half a turn to 180 degrees or every time the crankshaft turns twice the camshaft turns once um, and this is all to do with the strokes the fact of the matter is is you only need the valves to open um, for each stroke so every time because it's four stroke you have an inlet stroke in a sense, you have an exhaust stroke for your valve timing. And then you have a compression stroke and a... Um, not a compression stroke because that is an inlet in it. So you have your induction, which is drawing down, which means that the inlet valves open. You have compression, so there's no valves open. We'll get. It's not as simple as this, but we'll get to that. You have your compression stroke, all valves are closed, you have your power stroke, all valves are closed, and then you have your inlet, um, your exhaust, which means your exhaust valve is open. So that means that for out of the four strokes, it's only two strokes that we need the valves to be open. So if this was one to one, if this turn once and the, uh, the crankshaft turn once and the camshaft turn once, then it'd be, you'd have very skinny um, camshafts because they don't have to open a quarter of the turn of the camshaft. Where in essence, really, we want half um, half of the camshaft doing work not a quarter of it, quarter is very hard um, to manufacture, it's very hard to machine, it's, very, it's not hard to design but it's very hard in, in real life the strength of the camshaft would be bugger all etc you'd have um, a very sharp angled cam that would only pop up once every um, four strokes for each um, cylinder arrangement I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> anyway, it's easier to see it. So we have our um, cylinder head um, planted like so on top of the cylinder. And you have these valves, and these valves need pressing down once um, every four revolution uh, every four strokes. So the way this is done is your camshaft is inside here and your camshaft as it turns, as it's turned by the crankshaft via the um, crank, um, timing chain the cams turn around and activate these um, rockers which you can see move there so these rockers, I'll take that off because that's annoying me so these um, rockers or followers I have a problem with them because the rockers are in the head um, are timed as you can see it's got a beat to it and then that pushes against push rods and the 
push rods that go against the rocker cups at the top. So without the head in the way, this is what you'd get in. And if I can try and... Do you know what? I can do it. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yes I can. Right, I'll set this up. Right, let's see if we can get this demo to work. So, the inlet is this side, the exhaust is this side. So this one is the intake and this one is the exhaust. So as we turn the engine, you can see the inlet opening there. And then it closes. So now we're on the compression stroke and then the power stroke. And then as soon as the power stroke is at the bottom, the exhaust um, follower push rod activated depresses against this rocker like that. So you can see that open there. And then it starts to close. Now you'll see there's a bit, and I'll go back. There's the exhaust closing, and then just before it's reached closed, you can see the inlet. They kind of just swap places, they trade places. It's very hard to see because this is all wobbly. But there's that there, you can see them trade places. Now this is called valve overlap. And the reason for valve overlap is that the exhaust gases are moving out and uh, the induction gases and well the, the charge, let's just call it the charge the fresh charge coming in is moving in the exhaust gases need to go out so what happens is is as the piston starts to descend a partial partial vacuum is created the problem is, is this partial vacuum actually sucks in some of the exhaust gases as the valve is closing. So to kind of stop this happening the inlet valve opens early. So both valves, and that's why it's called valve overlap, because both valves for a fraction of a second are open at the same time. And what happens is, is the partial vacuum is created, the exhaust gases which are moving out now halt and start to reverse Whereas in when the inlet track opens, the inlet system still has a bit of momentum from when the last intake stroke happened. Because you've got to remember, if you're going 5,000 RPM, this is happening a lot of times a second. So what happens is, is when the valve opens and the exhaust va valve is still closing, fresh mixture goes into the cylinder, but also goes in and pushes out. It expels the remaining exhaust gases which are about to back up and re-enter the cylinder. So this is cylinder flushing. Um, and it's a bit like a two-stroke in a sense. Um, they use valve overlap to um, help increase the amount of fresh charge. And the reason how it increases fresh charge is because if it wasn't, if there's exhaust gases in there and just say five or ten percent of the gases in the cylinder that are then trapped when all the valves shut, if 5% of that is exhaust gas, then it's not fuel and air. So for your volume, you're, you're, you're straight away off, off the get-go, you're seeing a 5% loss. So they realised that if they did this overlap thing, yes, you make spill a tiny bit of fuel and air, fresh air, out of the cylinder, but when all the valves close um, on the compression stroke, this means that you have a full cylinder, a fresh fresh charge full cylinder. So I just wanted to do this setup just to show you physically how it works. Um, it's a bit hard because I don't have any springs or anything, no spring tension etc otherwise I do a proper jobby and I might even put some spacers, spacing tubes in here but um, you can kind of see in this orientation how it works and you can also see and what I'll do is I'll move you. So this is the reason why Honda um, had to opt for push rods. Because they wanted um, each cab inside, because this is where you sit as a rider, you sit this side. Can you see me pointing? Yeah, this side. And this is the front of the bike. Um, they wanted the cabs on the inside and the exhaust they didn't really care about. But as you can see, very clearly here without the cylinder in the way, you can see the twist. So you can see how this bolt pattern isn't square with the block and how these aren't square, the, block, the whole thing's been twisted. 
So that's why they had to have push rods, that's why they used the push rod system. They had to use the push rod sim system simply because if you were to time it with a chain, and you had a chain here, like so, or up here, just say, the axis is there, let me get something else, screwdriver. So, if you had a chain that was parallel with the rest of the block, you can see that the screwdriver isn't at this 20 degrees. And if you turn this to 20 degrees, there's no way you're going to get a gear on here that's going to rotate, because it's going to do this as it spins, which obviously you can't do. So they had to get a bit fancy with this push rod system. Well, these push rods don't really care which orientation that they uh, which the forces are applied applied and as you can see they don't know which is the front of the engine and these cups and these cups and this rod are all in line with each other so they don't care if they're offset to each other so um, the other beauty of it as well is you have there's just one camshaft so it's a lot like American V8s where there's just one camshaft in the middle and um, it's uh, yeah, it's a cool design, I love it. It's very mechanical, that's what I like about it. It's not just a belt or a chain, it's this very, very mechanical arrangement. And I love gears and push rods and rockers and mechanical things because they're a lot less likely um, to fail on you. Like, a, you know, cam belts, you look at cam belts and you go, well, that looks knackered, and then it'll last another 50,000 miles. You look at a cam belt, it looks great, and it snaps within 10. Um, with these kind of things, you know, like with the chains, etc., you can measure where, what not. Anyway, so we'll move on.